Hi, Crafty Patty here. I've been busy making the Starling Little Baby Mobile, and I'm creating to inspire you to make a mobile in the colors and the style and what you want to put on. There's so many options. This video is a longer video, so I've broken it up into three parts. And feel free to skip ahead to the part that you want to watch or watch the whole video. There's always tips and tricks along the way. First part, we'll talk about how to do the spiral macrame and attaching it to the hoop. Part two, we'll talk about how to embroider and how to make the darling little lambs and the stars and the letters. Part three, I will touch on how to make the needle felted balls. I also have a video on needle felting, so if you want more detail on needle felting, I'll leave the description below and you can watch that video as well. The beauty of this mobile is that I have personalized it and you can do the same. You can use as many letters as you want and it all will work. So I've added the name Stella to this mobile and Stella means star, so I've added stars. So you can personalize it to fit the baby that you're making the mobile for. Change up the color if it's for a boy. If you're not sure if it's a boy or girl, choose primary colors or earthy colors. The choices are all up to you. So stay tuned, have a look at the video, and have fun creating your special baby mobile. I'm using a standard embroidery hoop that I'm going to be attaching my cotton thread to to hang the mobile. And I'm using a 10 inch hoop or 25.4 centimeters. A key ring I got because they were cheap from the dollar store, but any type of ring will do. And that will just assist on hanging your mobile up to the ceiling. I will be using the Bernat Handicrafter cotton in stripes. This color is actually called pinky stripes, it's variegated, and it's the small balls. This particular one is a medium four, and it's 1.5 ounces. I've attached my ring to a piece of string and just added a piece of masking tape to keep it secure when we're working on the macrame. And the string is just looped over a nail that I've got in my wall. I've now cut 12 strands and each one of these is four yards long. There's my middle. I'm going to put all these strands through the hoop and keep the opening. Bring your fingers inside. Now bring all these strands through that loop and pull through. And take each strand and pull down and that will help to even out the knot and make it nice and smooth and tidy. Now find four strands and we'll start our macrame. And now we're going to do a spiral knot. So a spiral, you always start on the same side. So I'm gonna start on my left. You can start on the right if you want, but always on the same side. So if we're going on the left, we're gonna go left over the two middle, hold with your thumb, right comes over, behind and through that loop and pull through. Cinch it up to the top. Again, start on the left, over, behind and through. Left, over, behind and through. Thank you. 
and you can see that it's already starting to make a nice little spiral and to make it easier for doing your knots you can let that turn around it's fine as long as you keep on the same side and start on your same side so I'm still starting on my left and I'm going to continue this spiral for a few more inches so I've done about three and a half inches in the, the spiral knot so I was always on the left so this time I'm going to start on the right so bring the right over and through that was the right side now we're back to the left and now we're making just basic square knots Keep alternating, starting on the left, and then start on the right. That will be enough to give it a nice flat surface to glue on my star. And we're going to continue spiral, so I'm going to continue with my left. And that will form the spiral again. So each time I do my macrame, I want each strand to be eight inches long. So I'll find my next four strands, divide those from the rest of the yarn. And we'll start again. Start with a spiral again. But this time I'm not gonna go as far down. I'll stop about here and then do my square knots. Again, always on the left. And my last square knots were here. I'm going to stop here and I'm now going to form my square knots. So I'm going to start on the right. And the left. And the right and left. And that gives me enough of a flat surface. So again, I'll go back to my spirals and that's my ridge here. So I'll continue on the left and I will spiral down until I have my eight inches. So continue with the other groupings. Once you've got this one done, grab another four there. Here's another four, another four, and the last four. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six in total. Now I've taken the macrame off the wall and I've got it on a table so it's easier to attach to your embroidery hoop. So again, we're working with four cords, so just take out one section. And what we want to do is we want to take our two middle strands, bring those to the inside of the hoop, and now we can attach it to our embroidery hoop. We'll go left over the middle, right over, behind, and through. Cinch that up nice and tight, and then right over, and left over behind and through. Cinch it up nice and tight, and I'm going to do that one more time. So there we've got our first one attached to the embroidery hoop. And then I'm going to go around to the opposite side and 
we will find another grouping and we'll attach that to our hoop. We'll get the rest out of the way. And again, And then you can just evenly space. You'll have two more on this side and two on the other side. And now I'll tie on the next section. I've decided that I want one strand coming down here so I can hang some balls or whatever I want into the center of the mobile just to fill it up a bit more. So I've cut approximately one yard of the cotton yarn and I will just thread it with a nice big eyed darning needle. And I'm just going to come up to the back side and make sure I'm on the other side of the ring. I'll just come up, come through, and I'll go inside the lark's head knot and bring it down. I'll just take my needle off. Just going to pull that down a bit. And I'm just going to tie a knot just to secure this one piece. Right up tight underneath. I'll just tie one more knot just to make sure. Just a basic knot. I picked up two pieces of each of the colors. So a light pink, dark pink, white, and a gray. The pinks I used to make the letters and the white I'm using to make the stars and I'm also going to be making some little lambs and so then I need a bit of gray to add for the feet and the face. Embroidery thread you'll need some white color of choice I chose the pink for contrasting and the black to do accent faces and lines. You'll need an embroidery needle, one that has a large enough eye that you can get the thread through the eye of the needle. And you'll be needing a small amount of 100% polyester stuffing and it's just enough to fill your little letters so they've got a little bit of dimension. So when you're cutting into your letters and your stars, it really helps to have a really nice sharp pair of pointed scissors to get a nice clean cut. Choose a good embroidery cotton. A DMC is a good one. Um, if you don't, it's very hard to separate and they tangle and it's, it's, they're just not good. And so grab your cotton and just give it a little twist and then come in with your nail and then pull it apart so you've got three strands on each side. And then what I usually do, this might be hard to show on camera, is I hold it between my knees 
and then I take it and I pull it apart. And then just continue to pull. And now that I've got um, two strands, I like to keep the other strand nice and tidy and I use these little tiny cardboard cutouts. You can probably get them at your craft store. And it's just got a little slot here where you can tuck in your end and wind it up. And you've got your other piece of embroidery cotton ready to go and neat and tidy. Take your embroidery cotton, fold it over your needle, hold down tightly, slip it off, and then bring your needle between your fingers, guiding it over where your thread is, and then pinch, and then bring your thread through. I always cut two pieces at the same time, so I've got both of my pieces exactly the same size. I'm going to come inside and we'll just come out come into the corner and the top. Bring your embroidery thread through but not all the way and that will just tuck inside. Now I'm going to come through the back and come through the same hole. I'm going to use my finger to hold in between this loop while I'm pulling through. We want that loop held there because I'm going to now bring my needle through the loop and that will create the blanket stitch. So the best thing to do is go the same amount of distance away from your first stitch and the same depth in, and that will keep all your blanket stitches nice and consistent. Same for the corner, just go around, come in the same distance. And so what you can see is happening is when we're coming up through the loop, it's forming a line along the top and then there's your stitches along the edge of your object or your letter that you're doing. I'm going to continue to come all the way around to the top here and when I get up here then I'll start adding my stuffing. So now we've sewn along the one edge and time now to grab a little bit of polyester stuffing and open up the S. And just tuck it in and you can use a knitting needle if you want to kind of tuck it into the corners or your scissors which I find works actually quite well. So I'm just going to stuff in the stuffing. Put your stuffing in and continue to do your blanket stitch around the shape. And just keep adjusting your stuffing and do your stitching and stuff as you go. I'm just coming to my last few stitches. 
And here's my last one. So I'll do my one blanket stitch and I'm going to come in to the exact same hole and go through one more time. And now just come in beside that knot, bring your needle right through. Pull it tight, remove your needle, cut off your thread, and there's our cute little S. And just do exactly the same thing with your stars. And I have six stars because I've, that's the way I've designed it. I've also got six letters. But you can have as many stars as you want and as many letters as you want. So what I did was I've cut out my basic shape. I then went in and cut out another shape which just includes the ears and the face. That will get your next layer. And then I went in and I cut out the wool and that will be the third layer that will go on top. When I'm doing my cutouts on my felt, I put a little tiny piece of double-sided tape in between the two layers and it just holds the two layers together. I'm going to use a little bit of Aline's tacky glue, this all-purpose glue, and just a little bit to hold your little pieces in place so they don't slip when you're doing the embroidery. So you don't need a lot because you will have the stitching to also hold the pieces in place, but just enough to hold it. And you'll also want to cut out your feet and legs for the back side of your little lamb or sheep. And so just line those up again for the back side and make it look like the legs are going underneath the wool. So I'll just line up this to here. Give it a little bit of a curve just to make it look like the legs are going to be inside the wool. I 
I'm going to just put the back aside for now and I'm going to come in and we're going to make a little tiny triangle mold. So I'll just come up just off center and I'm leaving enough room to put two little black eyes above. So we'll just come up and we're going to be doing what we call a satin stitch. We'll just leave a little bit in the back here. So now we'll come directly across about a quarter inch away and come straight down. And then we're going to come up right underneath that first stitch as close as you can get. And now come down again very close to that first stitch and go down. And that's just enough to give it a little tiny cute little pink nose. We'll just turn this over. Just grab just that white layer. And we'll tie it off with a knot. And now we'll make some French knots for the eyes. So I'm going in between the wool hair and the nose, about the same distance and over to the right side a little bit. Bring your needle through. Don't pull all the way through, leave some in the back. Bring your thread up and then we're just going to wrap around four times. So go one, two, three, Four. We're going to come back, not in exactly the same hole, but very close to the same hole. Bring it down and now pull with your fingers and just tighten up all those strands that have wrapped around your needle. And now bring your needle all the way down. And there we have a little eye. We'll come over and we'll do that again on the other side. And now you've got two <laughs> cute little eyes. Still got our black thread in here, so we'll take advantage of that. And now we'll make a cute little mouth. So bring up your thread to the bottom of your the little pink nose. And then we're going to come down to about a quarter inch to the end of the face. And now we're going to come up to the left side and we're going to form a little bit of a mouth shape. So come up, just going to turn it to make it easier, come back down that same hole, but then come up past that first stitch. And now come back down again. Come back into the same stitch. And now we're just going to make a little tiny line that goes along the edge of the little smile. So we've done that one. 
And now we're going to come back down, just forming that little tiny line on the edge of the mouth. And at the same time, we're going to come and bring that to the back and start our other side. Come up on the other side of the mouth. And then go down. And come up past that first stitch again. And then we're going to go down the same hole and then we're going to come up just past our little end of our mouth so we can make that little tiny line on the side of the mouth. And then we're going to come down the other side and to the back. And there's our little mouth. So we'll just come back to the back, grab a little tiny bit of just the white, and tie a knot to finish that off. using my blush that I use for my makeup and just a little tiny bit on the end of the q-tip is all you need just a very small amount and then just a little dab and a little dab you can use the other end just to smooth it in just to give him a little tiny bit of color and I've got white on my needle and again it's three strands and now we're going to stitch around and when we get part way I'll come in and we'll get some stuffing in there and then we'll stuff and sew and again the blanket stitch as we go. First stitch just by the foot here just bringing it so my thread can be inside so I leave it some on the inside now we'll put the little guy together. And we're going to come in and start our blanket stitch again. And we'll go through all the layers of his back foot and the front foot. Again, leaving the loop so we can come in and make our blanket stitch. And keep going all the way around and probably stop about here and then we will put the stuffing in.
The other item I added to the mobile to add some fun are some needle felted balls, which I made myself. You can buy these online, but it's they're fun to make. For this particular video, I will go quickly and do a, a quick version of how to felt one of these balls. I'm now going to take some of these cords and wrap them around the hoop so I cover my hoop with the cording. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of the Eileen's glue onto the top here. I'm going to go halfway and we'll bring it to the back. Making sure that knot is on the bottom and then just wrap. These are all about five inches apart, and so we'll stop at two and a half, and I'm exactly at two and a half right now. So I'm just gonna cut off one strand. And I'm gonna leave this one for adding more balls and ornaments. So we're wanting to leave one strand. I'm gonna leave one strand here. And so now you're gonna only wrap with one. And again, just wrap to two and a half inches.
And now to add your balls, if you're using felt balls, you'll need a sharpened needle with, again, a large eye. Hold it over the needle again and pull down if it's really thick and you've got a smaller eye. And then bring that up through the eye of the needle and pull it through. Once you've got it pulled it through, just go right through the middle of the ball. Decide where you want that ball to hang. And then just come into the bottom of the ball. Come through the back. And then knot it. And that will hold your ball in place. I've covered everything in pink and white and it's bugging me that this is silver. So I'm going to just cover this ring. I'm just gonna tie a knot and a scrap piece of the cotton yarn. I'll tie it onto the other side, tie a knot, and then I'll just take a needle and I'll grab this and tuck them into the lark said knot where you can't see it. <laughs> 